What's up guys, it's DG Vanguard and I'm back from my hiatus, uh, I had to finish uni off, so now that that's all out of the way I'm able to focus on, well, focus, well I have to focus on getting a job now, And uh, but you know I have a bit more time to also put into the channel, which I have been sort of neglecting as I've been finishing uni off, but now that that's all out of the way, I wanted to go with, through with you a, a deck profile for premium. Uh, I've been seeing like people use this sort of this sort of like strategy uh, and I wanted to just sort of like take that to sort of like the nth degree make it try and make it as like competitive and consistent as possible the deck needs a, a few tweaks but uh, I'll go through with you like what I would change about it but it's an Alfred force marker stacking deck basically and your primary vanguard is Alfred early this is a card you always sort of like want to ride first just because like you're able to get a draw off it and then get your blaster blade out from soul instead of uh, fin instead of forcing it out of your deck which uh, is good for like in the aspect of triggers but um, it's uh, you know having you you can always ride blaster blade in this deck like it's like a 95 percent there's like only like a few small situations where you wouldn't actually get to ride blaster blade so like the consistency aspect of like getting the blaster blade onto your vanguard circle and then into soul for this is like quite high and the fact you're just able to keep stacking force markers onto the rear guard makes your know, rear guard blaster blades just absolutely terrifying with flowables out. So, and onto the secondary grade two, you've, uh, onto the secondary grade three, you've got the King of Knights. Both being 13k makes a huge difference in a lot of like, in a lot of matchups. Like rear guards are not going to be nearly as threatening if you can if you can save on a 5k shield. Which is um, which is pretty nuts when you think about it. Obviously, like this is what you want to go into after you've played Alfred early, uh, just because this can keep on uh, giving you blaster blades if you need them. Although you have G units for that as well. And if you keep riding, if you re-ride Alfred early, you can also use this guy's skill again to call one from hand if you have it, which is also very very useful. Um, but after you sort of like, if you're using the Tana and you want to like stack on more Alfreds, like keep going into this guy because he will get the 10k from having the Blaster Blade on Rearguard. And having a 28k Vanguard uh, is pretty is pretty scary actually. So definitely uh, play like four, I, I would say. Well, I would probably cut this for one of the other cards I'm going to be talking about. Then onto your grade twos, you've got Blaster Blade as a four of. Uh, this is like your key engine, really. Like you need it for the soul, you need it for the flow goals. Um, it's your win con, basically. Like this is what you want to be finishing your opponent off with, with like a massively force marker stacked blaster blade that's around 40, 50k before triggers. Uh, you never really use its skills, I find. I mean, the retire skills, you could maybe use a retire skill. But like you want to be saving your counter blast for like your win con making plays, so probably just like keep it as like a vanilla. Ten the fact that it's ten k as well is just stupid. You never use a crit on it either, just because like you want to be saving hand in your early game. Then you've got Tana. Like turn three, this card's absolutely insane. The fact you can just keep rewriting Alfreds from the deck and stacking force markers, it's just nuts, really. This card is absolutely <laughs> insane. Um. This is a nutty thing about premium, the fact that the the an old card that no one really considered before is now actually relevant just because force markers are a thing. And it's uh the fact that it gives five K as well, you know, it makes the it makes your re-ride alphas just so much more scarier on the turn three. And last for the grey twos, I'm only playing two LaRousse at the moment because I only have two LaRousse, but I would definitely go up to three or four of this guy. This is how you get your flow goals out from the deck. Um, you know, this maximizes the consistency of your early kill plays. So, definitely would play more of it if I had it. So, uh, I would cut a King of Knights and maybe one other card. But maybe one or two other cards, but definitely. Uh, uh, onto the grade ones. Interesting. Just because like the soul is like the as uh, 
as relevant as I've been finding. You want to be keeping as much hand as possible, especially if you have, especially if you want to be rewriting any grade threes that you have to keep playing force markers, and also if you want to keep serving hand, conserving hand to use for this guy, then I would definitely go up to four with this. But this is basically in there just because it's also a seven k PG, which is nice. Uh, and also the fact that this will still work with the with the G guard Maron play, but I would I would definitely consider going up to four of this just for just for the maximum hand conservation really. Uh, free stride fodder, you know you you a premium deck so you have to play a G zone, uh, so you know this helps you save on the grade threes that you would like to be rewriting to keep playing force markers. Uh, you know we can give the amount. Of times that you can stride as well, so that's pretty nice. Other than that, you know, it's just in there for stride fodder. Play free Barkle. Um, just for the play that you can put this behind your Vanguard before using Lou's skill to basically refund the cost of Lou. So when you ride Blast of Blade and you have this behind, uh, you'll be able to counter charge. Uh, you want you also don't want to be running too many 8Ks, but I do run Allen, mostly because the new 8K grade ones also have 10K shield, which goes really well with the Marin G guard being able to put you up to 43K base just like that. It's absolutely nuts. Um, the Sky Skill is pretty useful as well, just being able to keep drawing you cards and being able to call rear guards and being a solid booster on its own. I wouldn't really play Marin in this deck, I've considered it, but uh, it makes you... Well, Marin, the fact that she only works when you play rear guards on her own, on her on, on his own column, makes it a bit awkward, so I would play Alan just for the, the bit more of the, um, the freedom that it gives you in terms of like playing it. Uh, I've considered cutting it down to two because I don't really want to ride this guy. Just because it's an 8k and it leaves the potential for the opponent to damage to deny you uh, turn 1, which could make things awkward when you want to get your uh, Future Knight lose and uh, and Blaster Blade Superior Rides into play. And so like I might cut this for like the, the third or fourth copy of, uh, of um, Blaster Javelin. And then finally 2 Pat Gal. Uh, you know, like I said, the step build sold very, very quickly because of the whole Barkle riding and uh, you know, superior ride tactic. So you're able to use that to refund the counter blast quite easily. Uh, this is another card I'm considering cutting for the uh, for the fourth blaster javelin. But I would say you probably need to run two of this. Playing it on playing a 5k Vanguard as well isn't the end of the world in this deck as well. You actually want to be taking damage in the other game just to maximize the amount of resources that you can be going for with your kill turns and you know the deck is still blasters you can still get a lot of resources like heal the heal triggers are good the the defensive places that this deck has is also very good just because you have the a lot of the new triggers four triggers you actually you obviously have flogal this card is still insane like going into premium i don't know why they didn't do something about this guy i would probably semi limit it like just put it to two uh, just to increase the consistency, you know, you'd still be able to play the new triggers as well, so that'll be still fine. But like, this is this is a nutty card. Like, um, just being able to restand like massive blaster blades on the rear guard just makes so much. Just makes this deck like just function really. You play two future knight lose. Obviously, we're doing the the flow goal, bark goal engine for your starter. I'll go through exactly doing that, but um. You, you only need to play two. Like, people play four, but, like, it's taking away from your 10k uh, triggers. And you play this guy so quickly that uh, you don't really have to worry about it being sitting in your hand or sitting in damage or anything, doing nothing. So, uh, definitely just play two. You don't need four. Getting this card is a real pain in the ass, though, so uh, be, be wary of that. And then obviously you have four of the new Flogal, being a crit is insane, being a 15k shield is insane, giving 10k power is insane. Um, I don't know why these are allowed, these sort of triggers are allowed, it, it just makes, for especially for the time being, it, it, like, out, it pure classes older decks just on the fact that these give 10k power, these can give more shield, the fact that you are on a 13k base. It's just, um, 
it doesn't seem it, it, it's not very fair but like it feels a lot of fun to play with i'm not sure how it would be to play against though um but yeah obviously you need like the four flugels this is like the most con you you want to be playing for this just because you can and it's consistent uh you play two epona the new epona for the you know obviously for the higher numbers and the shield values and everything so uh, and you don't really need to play draw triggers in this deck just because like you're aiming to kill so quickly you want to be maximizing your crit potential uh for the new heal triggers again it's for that 10k defensive i have considering running like two of this and two of the uh bind heals but i don't know it just didn't feel as consistent you want to be like maximizing your defensive and offensive plays so Having a, a you know a 10k boost instead of a 5k boost makes a lot of difference. So like you you know out of the 16 triggers you're only running six old style triggers with, which only give the 5k boost. And you know finally Bark Gull. Out of all the starters that this deck can have, Bark Gull is by far the most consistent. There's just no debate about it. Like just being able to turn one, bring out a future knight Lou, turn two. You have a damage. Bring out your Flogel. Immediately superior ride. There was a reason this card was this card was banned for the longest time. This is like this card was like banned before I even before I before I even started playing. And like I looked at it and realized, yeah, this was still good. I still consider this like scary even back when it was maybe like a fair bit weaker and wasn't unbanned. But like the fact that this card is, exists just makes this deck like as consistent as possible. Really. The fact that you can just get your loot plays and your flogals like out immediately and just but that's the only thing you have to worry about is being damage denied gear chronicle is like one of the few clans that could probably deal with this uh ride strategy just because they can potentially damage deny you and then also go into calibon uh to um ruin that sort of play but that's the only deck i, I can really think off the top of my head that's competitive and premium that can actually deal with this before um before you can get this off kagero you can damage deny them so you don't have to worry about one of your grade zeros dying um so as long as you take the damage it's still fine so that's the main deck obviously for the force markers you're running obviously for the gift markers you're running force um it's not much to say about it really you just play force just because you have to and you know the fact that you can just you know the way that uh, Tana works, the fact that you can just get all these force markers onto the Blaster Blade rearguard and just like keep powering it up, it is nuts really. Uh, for the G-Zone uh, two Gantelot Peace Savers uh, you know, it's your main first tried target well, it's one of your first tried targets um, if you're going se if you're going second, this is what you stride into first just because this can still kill on its own, the fact that if your opponent's low on hand, they might be tempted to no guard this. You take like you get like two or three crits out of your you get like two you even get like one crit, this could be potentially fatal just because like you're putting it you're still putting it on a boosted up uh, blaster blade and then you're attacking that with crit pressure and potential flogal restands, so that can kill just on its own. Um, this you know, this provides protection as well against the Hetter Round and Denial Griffin plays that you could be facing against as well. So, you know, Gunslot Peace Saver is still a very good card. Uh, then, this is what you kind of want to be G-guarding into if you're going if you're going first, if you're riding your Grade 3 first as a Holy Saver. Uh, just because, like, you can then immediately just get into giving your Blaster Blade Twin Drive and an extra 3k power which you know will help get over numbers it will help uh, secure victories basically having that extra drive check does make a difference uh just because you know more chances to get crits basically uh two out miles just as an extra way to get a blaster blade out of your deck and if you have flogals in hand you can just smack it down and just do it that way the extra uh 5k that this that gives to the cold unit is also pretty nutty so i would definitely still play this um it's like a last resort i, I well actually you know you have one more unit it's a bit of a last resort uh and that is legit sword uh you know if you have an alpha vanguard you can see you want to call a blaster blade from your deck basically and give it 2k power um you could you know you could probably cut this for an ultima or something but um 
like I said, it, it's still could it's still another way to get Blaster Bleed onto onto rear guard basically, which I, I like. And obviously you play two Holy Squire because you're an Alfred deck. Um for the Link Joker plays, even though it's not really too relevant anymore. Um but you know the unlocking is still decent. And then we don't play Sabrius in this deck just because you are super early game. You don't mind riding grade three first at all. Actually, your deck's much stronger if you ride grade three first. Um, so that's some that's you know that is something. Uh, so you don't need Sabrius uh, because you don't really care about the grade two game at all. Uh, so for G guards, you're on to uh, you've got the assault uh, just for just for a big number really. Um, the set doesn't really build a, a massive field of rear guards, really. It just really only relies on like getting a blaster blade that's like up to like 40k, and that's usually enough with like Flogel supporting it. So the, the situations where I go into this is rather small, but you know it 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 can be it can be useful. And you've got uh, Mascal for you know again big numbers, being able to just pump up to 38,000 total is pretty deep. Is pretty nice. Uh, Dismal to help protect your Blaster Blade from being retired during the battle phase, so that can that's good. And finally, two Marin, just because like this deck is this deck needs Marin, <laughs> just because like the fact that you can just call Alan from the deck and like instantly get your Vanguard up to forty three cap power, it's just uh, pretty nutty. So that's the that's the premium deck for for Alfred Blasters. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the profile. If you want me to go through some standard profiles, uh, please let me know. I do have uh, Royals and Kagero, and I will also be getting Nova Grappler soon. So I will be going. I, I will probably go through uh, my personal choices for the builds. Um, but it is a very standardized thing, so I'm not sure how much interest you, there might be for that, just because like the builds are very similar across the board. Um, if I find some interesting text, I'll probably make a video about it. But uh, for now, I hope you enjoyed the, the premium profile. And uh, we'll see you next time, YouTube. Peace.